The Cannibal Boy. Alright, this is the third part of the... Psych of the... Physical Exorcist series. Hmm, it's supposed to... They say... The tags on Steam say it's supposed to be like a visual novel, but it's made in RPG Maker MV. So, I wonder if it's any actual gameplay. English. Maybe I have to make a choice? Since there was uh, the option to load, that means I can save... Or something, right? Huh? Is it all scrolling? Don't open your door, that's a way for the enemy to get in. Whoa! If you heard of his story, you have to hurry and tell someone else who hasn't. Or else, he might just come and get you. Please name the protagonist. Default Brucey. Eight. Le yeah, I can always edit out the part where it, acts, it where the window shrunk down, uh, so I don't have to show my desktop. Yeah, that, that might be an issue. The way it, it, it the way it just switched back to window mode, even though I had it in full screen mode. Hey, have you guys heard of the Cannibal Boy? Jade. Hmm. Does have visual novel like mechanics when it comes to saving in the middle of dialogue. Kind of like Sacred Earth Promise. But it also comes with a log. Huh? Of course, it's the urban legend everyone's been talking about. Who's this character? Jay James, so I need to remember why we're in Jade's room with this heavy textbook on counseling psychology? Huh, I really don't. Uh, Why was it again? Because we need to study. We have finals tomorrow, remember? James, is he also an exorcist, or does he end up dying in this... Uh, in, in zero? You know how strict that professor can be? Do you want to fail that course? Jay, there was only studying abroad for a year. Since when did Brucey become such a downer? Did he get dumped or something? Uh, how should I know? Oh, come on, Brucey. Tell us what's wrong. We promise we'll make fun of you together. So anyway, have you heard of the cannibal boy or not? I have, but so what? But Brucey's the cannibal, isn't he? He said something about eating his client if they didn't pay him. You know the recent multiple homicides in the area? According to a friend of a friend, all the victims saw a certain boy. Then a few days later, they were found dead in their rooms. Their bodies and limbs gone, with only the heads left behind with a horrifying grimace. Even creepier, they all had human bite marks on their necks. Do you know what that means? That their heads were ripped off by the cannibal boy, with his teeth. Uh, is a boy's bite really that strong? Hey Brucey, what's wrong with you? You never question the logic of an urban legend, otherwise it's no fun. Okay, okay, sorry. Well yeah, I've heard about it. So? It means you're doing a bad job covering up your, uh, your cannibalism. Well, do you know about his past? What caused him to become a bloodthirsty man-eater? It's possible there's another cannibal out there trying to frame him. Beats me. What, are you going to do a case conceptualization or draw his genogram or something? Why not? We get to hear an interesting urban legend and get a refresher on counseling psychology. Let James finish the story. James, are you the culprit? Part 1, The Cannibal Boy. The cannibal, bo cannibal boy was originally just an ordinary kid who lived happily with his dad, mom, and big sister. But one day his mom cheated on his dad and left the family, leaving the dad to become an alcoholic and everything changed. Whenever the dad was drunk, he did stuff to the big sister. Why does this sound familiar? The big sister resisted desperately at first, until the dad said, If you won't play with me, 
I'll play with your little brother. You're his big sister, right? You decide what you want. So the sister just stopped resisting and let the dead, uh, dad keep abusing her? She wanted to be a martyr at such a young age, huh? How very admirable. Well, that's what kids are like. Kids don't know who's responsible for things that happen. That's why some end up believing that their mother left because they were a bad kid. The big sister was exactly that type, so even though the dad's abuse got worse and worse, all her little brother did was cry and she shouldered it all. How can a kid deal with that much abuse? Why wouldn't she want to run away? You don't understand. When parents don't act like parents, kids, especially ones with younger siblings, will grow up and take on the role of parents. The big sister became a mother for her brother and her dad. Besides, the way the dad abused the big sister, it was hard to say who the parent was. Yeah, like you've, see like you've seen it? After every assault, the dad would lie on top of the sister, crying his eyes out. Mama, don't leave me. I hate you, Mama. Wish you'd go to hell. Wah. Ugh, those kinds of villains are the worst. I bet there was something up with the dad's mama, the cannibal boy's grandmother, right? If you keep speculating like that, the story will never end. That's why forces of pure evil in anime and comics are proper villains. I guess she likes to explore that the CM trope page. You don't have to consider their background stories or anything, you can just blame them. Like Jade says, if the dad was a proper villain, the big sister would have had no problem blaming him, but sadly he wasn't. And in addition to putting up with her dad's abuse, she had to comfort her little brother who wasn't good for anything other than saying I'm sorry. Don't worry, I'm fine. Fine, the sister was swallowed back tears for the whole family. Tears bowl in her little body. How could she be fine? To make matters worse, even though the sister protected the little brother from physical abuse, he couldn't escape the mental abuse. Unfortunately for him, the little brother looked a lot like his mom. That's right, the mom who left with some other man. It looked like his mom? Oof. You wanna get bullied for being a sissy? Hey, this sounds also sounds familiar. The dad prepared a lot of meat every meal and forced the brother to swallow it down. He wanted the brother to grow, grow big and strong and not look so much like his mom. Even when the, the brother became scared of the sight of meat and threw up whenever he ate it, the dad was relentless, shoving big chunks of meat into his mouth every day. The more dad abused him, the, uh, the more he cowered. The more he cowered, the more the dad abused him. And like a curse, the dad's spirits came true. The little brother really did get bullied for being a sissy, and his teachers turned a blind eye. His life became a living hell. And that's when he started having hallucinations. He saw apparitions that no one else could see, and heard voices no one else could hear. Finally, he came to the conclusion that evil spirits were to blame for everything. If they really, if they were really human, they wouldn't be so mean to me. Dad, my teachers, my classmates, they must all be possessed. Jeez, couldn't he have asked for help? Who could he be asked? The useless teachers? If you're telling your teachers, I'll kill myself and your sister. You don't want to see your dad and big sister die, do you? I know you're a good boy. If this is... Is this actually Brucey's backstory? If it is, it might explain why uh, 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 some of his interactions with Lucy. As you can tell, the dad's quite the character. Jesus, he's such a drama queen. I haven't even gotten to the dramatic part yet. Don't blow your load so early, man. One day, the little brother came home, heavy-footed as usual, and opened the door. From inside the house came the familiar smell of alcohol, mixed with blood. Who killed who? A broken bottle. A bloody knife. The dad's face stabbed to a pulp, the sister with her wrist slashed open. The little brother didn't have to read the suicide note on her desk to realize what had happened. Heh, <laughs> so it was too much for the big sister after all. Maybe I should say I'm impressed she lasted so long. When he picked up the bloody suicide note on the table, though, what he saw was... It's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. And in that instant, something snapped inside of the little brother. My sister would never write that. She'd never write anything that, to hurt me. It must have been, that's right, an evil spirit. The little brother's brain rewrote what heaven in order to protect himself. The voices he heard and illusions he saw served to protect the little world he shared with his sister. The evil spirit and dad wanted to possess my sister, but she didn't want to hurt me and wanted to free dad, so she killed him and herself. But they aren't the only ones possessed by evil spirits in this world. My teachers are, my classmates are, and so many more people. If I don't do something to free all the people who are possessed, won't my dad and sister have died in vain? There's a reason for all the suffering I had to endure. So he ends up killing everyone thinking they're all possessed by evil spirits, huh? It's my turn, my turn to exorcise all the evil spirits. But I can't just leave my dad and sister behind like this. Oh, I'll pack them up and take them with me. Good thing Dad trained me to put lots and lots of meat in my belly. It'll be a huge hassle for the police when they find the blood but can't figure out who the victims are. 
I've got to leave them the heads at least. So the cannibal boy he picked up his dad and sister and set on a journey to exorcise evil spirits. It might be a red herring. He maybe Bruce C and this new cannibal boy are different people. It's just a. They just want you to think it's Brucey because he seems to fit the profile so well. That's the cannibal boy's past. That's why only the heads of his victims are ever found. It's the last remaining shred of his conscience. James, why is your version of the story so different from the one I heard? Huh? How's your version go? Well, when the cannibal boy was a little kid, his dad always locked him out on the balcony. He would knock on the window every night, begging his dad to let him in. Once you've heard a story, you have to tell someone who doesn't know it yet, or he'll come knocking on your window at night and beg you to let him in. As soon as you open the window, he'll bite your head off and eat your body. Hold on a sec, Shade. So now that I've heard a story of the cannibal boy, I have to tell somebody who hasn't, or he'll come and eat me. Is, is that right? Yeah, something wrong? James, you wasted time telling me the story at the risk of failing the course. Don't tell me. Yep, you got me. How can I worry about failing some stupid course when I might get eaten tonight? Why, you lil? Okay, I don't care in the slightest who the cannibal boy might be coming for tonight. Hey, so that means you have to tell both versions of the story, don't you? The real problem is that you fabricated too much of the story, James. Seriously, how can you possibly know what the dad did to the cannibal boy and his sister at home? Sure, people shouldn't question the logic of an urban legend, but you made that stuff up. That's just, that's different. That's a fanfic. It's more fun to sex it up, though. I dare you to disagree. What? Are you kidding me? I think you're confused, my dear. Are you honestly seeking the truth in an urban legend? They're practically made to be sexed up. Uh, okay. The essence of an urban legend isn't a blending of facts and lies. The cannibal boy's past may not have been that tragic, or it could have been even more tragic. He may not actually exist, or he might really come and eat Brucey tonight. That's what an urban legend is all about. What's the fun knowing all the facts? Okay, fine. As an urban legend is bound to have some lies mixed in with the truth, nothing is certain. But there's one thing about your version that's cer definitely certain. And what's that? Too corny? I don't know if the dad and big sister were really possessed by evil spirits, but I'm pretty sure that it's your fault came from the sister herself. Oh? Why do you think that? People who are too scared to stand up to bullies, to blame on to other people who are nicer than themselves. Shift the blame. So they bully nice people and cower from the bad people, which means everyone gets bullied by some bad person. It's just like what Lucy said. That's not the work of an evil spirit. They're all just so-called nice people. That, that, that James I wonder is, is he also so he's the second cannibal, huh? I'm guessing. Or maybe he's some kind of crazy person who likes to make urban legends come true by killing people. Whoa, did it, is this an actual video? Anyone can turn to an evil spirit. Including uh, Jade and Brucey. So they're actually using a video file to play the, uh, the that opening. By the way, have you guys heard of doppelgangers? Oh no. Huh? Of course, it's a popular urban legend. We just talked about the cannibal boy, now it's doppelgangers? What happened to the studying? What about our finals? Bruce, there's something I have to tell you. The earlier discussion enlightened me with a singular truth. Well, what kind of truth? That, uh, uh, that school doesn't matter anymore? If we give up on finals... Then it's winter break for us, starting now. Oh, really? I'm going home. Hold on, let's just take an hour break. After that, I promise we'll study, okay? Alright, one last story. We all go on together, bitch. You realize I can hear you, right? A doppelganger, which literally means fucking double, is basically the phenomenon where you or someone else witnesses your double. I'm sure you've heard of it. Sure, who hasn't? Okay, do you know what happens if you ever meet your doppelganger? Your doppelganger kills you, right? Anything else? If your doppelganger dies first, you'll die under similar circumstances. Oh, so you're dead meat either way. Do you also know that doppelgangers aren't entirely fictional? I'm sure we've all come across something similar in our lives already. Know what I mean? Twins. 
In TV shows and comics, twins often find themselves in similar situations, right? Just like real doppelgangers. Part 2. Doppelganger. The main characters in my story are twins, a boy and a girl. Even though they were fraternal twins, they looked nearly identical, as if they were really doppelgangers. The little brother had feminine features and the typical signs of puberty didn't show. If they put on the same clothes as his twin, people would have definitely mistaken them for sisters. All too often, boys look like girls end up being, getting bullied. But not in the little brother's case. His big sister was extremely protective, and if anyone was mean to her little brother, she would, was quick to bully that person back. Yandere. An eye for an eye, that's how the twins operated. Under his sister's protection, the little brother never felt insecure about his femini femininity. But he became very dependent on his big sister. Meanwhile, the big sister always needed someone to rely on her to uphold her self-esteem, and she grew to be quite passive-aggressive. If her brother ever failed to know something that she did for him, she would get overly frustrated and ignore him for days on end. Adorable, isn't she? Heh <laughs> heh. But regardless of all that, the twins were very close, almost as if only two it was only the two of them in their own little world. That is, until the big sister met her doppelganger, a certain handsome guy. Wait. The heaven this past spring, doesn't he have a similar silhouette to Brucey? The twins were both taking intro to philosophy at the time. One day they were discussing animal rights in class and the professor asked where it was okay for people to eat cats and dogs. Is that Professor Moron or something? What's there to think about? You eat an adorably, f uh, you eat an adorable fur baby today. You might as well eat a baby tomorrow. Can you just let me finish my story, please. Sorry, I just really love animals. There was this handsome guy who usually sat in the corner and rarely talked, but that day he rose, he raised his hand and spoke. So we can eat chickens, pigs, and cattle, but not cats and dogs. That seems awfully inconsistent to me. Hearing his argument, the little brother had a response. People don't love things equally. That's just human nature. I think that kind of inconsistency is excusable. I don't normally eat animal meat, but that's just a personal choice. If a dog or cat lover still chooses to eat other kinds of meat, I don't think that's any less consistent than my preferences. The two went at it and support was split in the class. As class ended, the professor praised both for their well-constructed arguments. The big sister supported her brother's argument, but she was also impressed by the handsome guy's logical persuasiveness and the articulate way he spoke. Hmm? What's the matter, Brucey? Looks like you were about to say something. What is it? You're talking about Greet and Hans, aren't you? Greet and Hans? Who are they? James, you really are something. Do you really not remember them? They were in our year, and you had classes of them. So you made an urban legend based on a, on Brucey and <laughs> your classmates. They measured in psychology as well. Greet and Jane in particular were very close, but half a year ago, the two of them disappeared. What? Seriously? Jay, the fact Greet was your friend. Isn't it a little mean to gossip about your friend's disappearance? Look how sincere my eyes are. Are these the eyes of someone who gossips like that? Oof, how should I know? I'm not a telepath. I can't read your mind. Precisely because Greet and I were so close, it makes sense that I want to figure out what really happened. Isn't that right, James? Uh, I guess? What's going on here? Even if she really knows the truth, why would she want to talk about it now? What is Jay linking? As time went on, Hans and the handsome guy clashed in heated debates over all kinds of issues. They became rivals and best friends. When the student association planned a big event, Hans formed a group of Greet and the handsome guy, and then uh, Greet invited me, so the four of us ended up working together. That was really fun, but also super exhausting. After a successful event, Greet suggested going to an amusement park after classes on Fridays to celebrate. However, our professor suddenly decided that Hans and I were in charge of the next presentation. We needed time to repair, so only greeting the handsome guy made it to the amusement park. And that's where something magical happened. As soon as the two of them arrived at the park, it started drizzling romantically. They both had umbrellas, but they acted like they didn't and huddled under the handsome guy's umbrella together. They were suddenly so close. She just said she didn't go. How does she know all this? Her, t her mind reading skills, right? I just know, okay? Don't interrupt me. Wait, what? They stayed at the amusement park until it was dark. When they finally left, there was an amazing night view all around them. It was incredible. When a whim Greek pulled out her phone, played her favorite song, Don't Fall For My BFF. The handsome guy said, wow, I love this song too, and they had a great time talking about music. 
They walked together for the evening, humming songs together. They got so close that the backs of their hands accidentally touched. And then, heh, they were holding hands. Don't read too much into this, but are you interested in anyone at the moment? There are two, I think I might have feelings for. Really? Me too. Is one of them here with you right now? Yeah, it's you. That was the moment they confirmed they had feelings for each other. But... Feelings is such a big word. Rhi didn't realize she had an actual crush on the handsome guy until the day she invited him and me to a movie. A movie that ha Hondrick had recommended. Oh yeah, that movie was so good. It was, especially when the girl finds out the guy he, she secretly loves is into her best friend. That was pretty heartbreaking. Hussie, you've both seen the movie already? Well, oh well. I just happened to see it with a friend. Oh, I see. Reet recalled the handsome guy saying that there were two people he had feelings for. One was Greet, and the other must be the one he went to the movie with. Thinking about it threw Greet into a jealous fit. That's when she realized that she'd fallen in love with the handsome guy. Yandere. From that moment on, she couldn't get her head out of the clouds. Greet herself fought a 20 year old Shin Exo love stricken. But what could she do? She was totally obsessed. Greet went on several dates with the handsome guy, and it was always romantic. She fell more and more in love, then finally, she decided to confess her feelings. Greet, I think we should just be friends. Oh no. Oh no. That's not something you should say to a Yandere. I see, you've fallen for the other person then. Sorry, I should have realized how I felt sooner. No, it's not your fault. Can you tell me who it is? I can't say exactly, but someone close to you. Oh no. We should just be friends, those words started at all. Oh, I forgot to mention. Besides listening to music, Greet loved to cook. Every time she made steak, she invited me over to her place. The Saturday after she got rejected, Greet invited me over again. Normally she would leave up and chatted through dinner, but that day, Greet didn't say a word. The atmosphere was unusually heavy. Hans was out with a friend too. The only sounds were that of cutting and chewing meat. Greet's steaks were usually cooked medium, but that day they were rare. Whenever she cut her steak, I could see the bright red juice bleeding out. Hey, do you think I'm kind of an attention seeker? Reed finally broke the silence, but stepped on a disturbing topic. What's wrong? What makes you say that? You know how I told you my dad was very strict? When Hans was little, my dad would lock him- So Hans is the cannibal boy. My dad would lock him up out on the balcony for every little mistake. Hans would knock on the window all night long, begging my dad to let him in. And every time I let Hans back in the dead of the night, but my dad always found out the next day and beat Hans up. It was all my fault. It was your dad who beat Hans up, not you. I know, but if I were Hans, I'd blame my sister's meddling for making my punishment that much worse. I, can't, I still can't mind my own business. It might look like I'm always doing stuff for Hans and yours, but I only did it for the attention. Everyone knows, but they're too, just too nice to say it. Whatever people think of you, if you had just minded your own business back when I broke my leg freshman year, I don't know how I would have gotten through. Sometimes I think I, if I hadn't broken my leg, we wouldn't be such close friends. It was kind of destiny, don't you think? Besides, you're not a telepath. How do you know Hans? Or anyone else thinks you should mind your own business? Sorry, you always have to, to make me feel better. Don't say that, we're friends, aren't we? Jeez. She always said this and that, that son of a little bitch. <laughs> That's why she had no friends. Huh? Every time she felt insecure, she never said anything. She just pushed herself to the edge but still wanted everyone to notice. How could anyone stand that? Heh, <laughs> but that's what made her so appealing. I love seeing Greet riled up, and sometimes I invite Hunts, but not her, right in front of her face, or ignore her birthday and say, Oops, when was it again? A few days later. I wish you guys could have seen her face. The poor thing was so adorable. Ugh, you're such a psycho. Oops, I got carried away. Let's get back on topic. So what's wrong? What's on your mind this time? It's a handsome guy. I thought he was interested in me, so I asked him out a bunch of times. But it turns out he didn't like me after all. It must have been so annoying hanging around him like that. I don't think... And you know wh what? He liked someone else already. Full Yandere mode. Jade, time to evade tank. Huh? Oh shoot, she killed herself. Reed stabbed the steak heart of her knife and red juice splattered across my face. Oh. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. You're the one who went to that movie with him, aren't you? I knew it. It's all your fault. Your fault, 
times infinity. I know it sounds corny, but in that moment I saw murder in her eyes. In that instant, she really meant to kill me. Just thinking about it, about how many times Screep must have simulated in her head how she was going to push me down, mount my struggling body, and thrust her knife into my face. Oh, I just can't. She opened her eyes. Whoa, what the fuck? But she just stared at me, then bit her lower lip. She put the knife down with a trembling hand and never touched me once. Why you? Why does it have to be you? If I hate you, I'll lose the only friend who listens to my problems. It was like a bucket full of ice water thrown into my face. I felt robbed and disillusioned. It looked so promising. But Greet totally ruined the moment. You're actually hoping for her to attack you? You're just like my dad. It's never your fault, is it? If I blame you, it's like I'm the bad guy. Perhaps to Greet, the villains in her life weren't quite evil enough, like her dad and me were the worst. She wanted to shift all the blame on us, but she couldn't because we weren't completely at fault. Lee, we shouldn't see each other for a while. I need to be alone. As I listened to Greet's words, I told myself I had to be patient. Not yet. At least not now. Greet is still just a bud, but sooner or later she'll flower and secrete her sweet nectar. After our confrontation, Greet got visibly depressed and had trouble sleeping even an hour a day. Every time she got the song, Don't Fall For My BFF in her head, she couldn't stop the sadness swelling up inside of her. Why not me? Why her? Why don't you want my love? Why do you want hers? These thoughts continued to haunt Greek. It had all started and ended so quickly that Greek couldn't take it. Now it had ended. Time was so slow that Greek couldn't take it. She just wanted to go back before any of it had happened, and perhaps she would only have fun memories. Meanwhile, Hans knew that something wasn't right and asked Greek what had happened, but she refused to say anything. Oh no, Hans went Yandere too, didn't he? If you really understood me, I shouldn't have to explain. You, you just know what I was going through. I guess no one in the world understands me after all. Hans didn't even know that Greet was in love. How could he have com comforted her? But he didn't give up. Even if Greet doesn't want to tell me, I can be there for her anyway. And it worked it surprisingly well. Greet, the steaks you make are delicious. Can you teach me how to cook them? I want to learn. Really? Well, of course. I'd be happy to. Oh no. With Hans by her side, Greet finally started feeling better. Greet's heartbreak was just a blessing in disguise. Greet may have gotten rejected, but she got that much closer to her dear brother, Hans. Oh, that's a good story, but wasn't this supposed to be an urban legend? What about the doppelgangers? Who said I was done? You really can't diss Brucey for blowing his load too early. Hey, if Greet refused to say anything, how do you know she had sleeping problems? Or what kind of thoughts haunted her? Or what kind of interaction she had with Hans? Listen to yourself, and you accuse me of sexing my story up. Excuse me? No, Jake didn't. What? Nothing, I just don't think Jake fabricated anything. I think it's what actually happened. Well, Brucey, you understand me better than my own parents. What, Brucey? You're usually such a skeptic. Has Jade put you under a spell or something? Do I need to wake you up? I'm not sure, but I get a feeling that Jade sells a Joker up her sleeve. There's no reason for her to make up such little details. How much does she know? How much does she know? How does she know? What are her motives? That's the important part. One day at the end of the semester, Greet and I stayed on campus until nightfall to finish off some essays. Then we headed home together. On the way, I could tell Greet was holding something back. It was obvious she wanted to tell me something, but she wanted me to take the initiative and ask her what was wrong. Huh, like I ever do that. So we just kept walking on and on. We had gotten to a park near the ca uh, campus when Greet finally opened her mouth. Jade, you're mad at me, aren't you? Huh? I got pissed that the guy like uh, fell for you, even though it wasn't your fault. I'm really sorry. I was such a shock. Greet was taking the initiative to make up with me. I mean, fuck. All I wanted was to see your emotions explode. But that was okay. I saw the Joker up left to play. Hey, forget about it. I think you misunderstood, Greet. I pointed towards the park, and Greet turned her head to look. Oh no! Did he kill someone? Or did? Oh no. Could it be that Brucey got together with Hans? That would be a twist, wouldn't it? Yup. There, Hans was nuzzled up against the handsome guy's chest, and the handsome guy's arms were around Hans' delicate shoulders. This wasn't a hug between friends. They were obviously making out. Huh? I did go to that movie with him, but just as friends. He was clear about that. The one he's really into is someone close to you. Much closer than I am. Ah. Ah. 
Oh, come and think of it. The last time I went to your place, wasn't Hans out with a friend? Who do you suppose that friend was? Who? Do, what do you think they did? Did they go to an amusement park with a beautiful night view? Did they make out like they were doing now? Or was it even hotter, more steamy? Hans, you, you. Hans, huh, not quite convinced yet. Fine, just listen to the lovebirds talk then. You love that amusement park way too much, don't you ever get tired of it? Never, as long as it's with you. I'm having so much fun today, thanks for asking me out. I've been looking down lately, I, I hope that would cheer you up. Well, Grease has been in a horrible mood lately, and she won't tell me what's wrong. I'm worried that she's met some playboy who's stringing her along. If anyone betrays Greet, I'll skin him alive and eat his flesh. What? <laughs> Silly boy, well do you know that the one betraying her right now is you, Hans. Did he eat himself? Ha. Huh. Playboy, where did that come from? I ask you out and all you can think about is your sister. Greet will always be my number one. You're number two at best. That's that's some sister complex you got. Did Greet spoil you when you were little? I don't know what you mean. But my sister was always nice to me, yeah. Isn't Hans just the sweetest? Even during his date he was thinking about Greet. But the Greet, his words only made her feel like Hans was using her to make himself look good. Like I said before, my dad used to beat me up when I was little. Greet didn't want me to be the only one to get punished, so she always tried to help me out and we'd get beaten up together. That's how much she cared about me. But to me, all I did was cry and let Greet console me, forcing her to say she was fine. You can't blame yourself, it was all your dad's fault. No, it wasn't my dad's fault. Back when her mom was around, she was he was really, really nice. Hans. My dad's not the one to blame. It was all because of the evil spirit. Oh, what? So... Uh, so his Hans's story, actual real story, somehow evolved into an urban legend. I knew that once I exorcised the evil spirit, my dad would be back to being nice again. Oops, did I say something weird. Oh, what I meant was my dad was possessed by the ghosts of his past. So you don't mean an actual evil spirit. You had me worried there for a moment. Sorry, let's not talk about that anymore. I'm sorry to remind you of such horrible memories. It's fine, but hey, by the way. Greet said she's hanging out with Jade tomorrow and won't be back until night. How about coming over in the morning? Greet taught me a secret recipe. Haha, <laughs> what a masterpiece. When I was in the lowest of my lows, you had the gall to pester me to teach you how to cook. It, it wasn't even for my sake, it was to seduce him. That's what was raging through Greet's mind. I know, because I heard it. Of course I love to go, but I'm not a big fan of vegetarian meals. Vegetarian? Why vegetarian? Oh, I thought you were a vegetarian, Hans. What? No, I'm not. I don't eat regular meat, but I'm not... I just don't eat regular meat, but I'm not a vegetarian, silly. He's a can... So they're both cannibals. A cannibal couple. But that time you criticized my argument in class. I thought you said you didn't eat meat because you were a vegetarian. Are you just a picky eater? And what kind of meat do you prefer? Could it be the kind I'm thinking about? Oh, that's very naughty of you. Watch out or I'll eat you up. Huh, someone's a horny boy. Just listen to your dirty talk. What would your sister think if she heard? Oh, she did hear it. She was very angry. Then they kissed, right there in front of us. A wet your eye kiss with plenty of tongue. Of course, Green and I were the only other ones there, but it was quite the sight. The two lovers had no idea we were there, and made out passionately for a while. Be careful on your way home. Don't get eaten by the cannibal boy. I'm more worried about you. Do you want me to walk you home? No thanks. I can take care of myself, you know. Okay, but you be careful too. Remember, I'll be waiting tomorrow. Don't be late, or you'll miss out on the meat. I thought Greet might do something, but she just walked away without saying a word. Maybe she was too angry to do anything. I can see the bud of her rage growing larger and redder. Greet was about to bloom and secrete her sweet, sweet nectar. The next morning, the handsome guy arrived at Hans's place on an empty stomach. There we found a table lined with meat dishes. Sweet and sour pork, pork belly stew, smoked sausage, steak salad. All sorts of dishes. The main dish was Greet's special steak, cooked rare just like that at a time. Made of human meat. Wow, what a feast. Sorry, I accidentally got too many ingredients. Considering how early in the morning you had to come, I was afraid you'd be eaten by the cannibal boy. It almost sounds like both versions of the cannibal boy story are true. He's just a man-eater, no need to fear him. There are plenty of vampires in the world. They suck the blood of the poor bit by bit just to make their own lives more luxurious. And we just look the other way. Unlike those vampires among us, at least the cannibal boy kills you on the spot and you die without suffering. 
If I had to choose, I'd go for the quicker death. Besides, the cannibal boy treats humans just like any other edible animal. So many people are quick to judge cat and dog eaters when they have no problem eating chicken, pork, or beef. Compared to those people who discriminate between animals, at least the cannibal boy is morally consistent. He treats all living animals equally. Hmm, sounds like flawed logic to me. Really? You want to talk about that over brunch? Eating cats, dogs, humans, blah blah blah? James, you wouldn't feel like eating if you were there, would you? Well, I'm not a freak like them. But forget about moral consistency or abuse. In my opinion, it doesn't require complex beliefs or a tragic past for humans to eat other humans. Huh? We all talk about drooling over sexy bodies and refer to luscious breasts as melons. Those kinds of expressions are all over the place, don't you think? Plus, English, Chinese, and Japanese all use eating-related words to relate to, to refer to sex. We're so used to that kind of slang that we don't think twice about it. Perhaps in the collective subconscious, eating is essentially a kind of possession, a kind of intimacy, just like having sex. If eating is such an instinctive thing, do we need to ask why a cannibal boy eats humans? Do we really need to dig into what a tragic past he has? People want to fabricate his past because they're convinced he's a freak and a monster. He must have a very twisted past. He's not like us normal people. Uh, do you even hear what you're saying? What I mean is, you don't eat cats or dogs, but not because you're an animal lover or because you're civilized. Only because you happen to live in that kind of echo chamber. Excuse me? The only reason you eat humans is because no one around you does. You're just afraid if you do, you'll be treated like a freak. Let's get back to the story. Hans, what kind of meat is this? Does it matter? Do you not like it? I do. I like it so much, I have to know what kind of meat it is. The texture is like beef, it tastes like pork, and it smells like lamb, but it's not restru restructured meat. Maybe a hamburger that's 70% pork and 30% lamb might taste something like this. It hasn't been grounded, it's a whole piece of meat. It's a human! Where do you get this? Huh, so you care more about the type of meat than how I cooked it. Figures. You're Greek, aren't you? Where's Hans? Oh shit, she cooked Hans! Weapon between us. Doesn't concern him. Don't drag him into this. Really? Do I have to spell off for you? The handsome guy looked at the bloody chunk of meat and put his fork down with a shudder. He used to be he used to be horrified at this he seems horrified at this moment now, but later on he just ta eats, talks about eating people so casually. If I had to play the bad guy, you know that sissy would have been bullied like hell. And now he's all grown up, he's seducing guys I like behind my back. Also, your sense of taste, it's really something else. There was a guy and a girl, identical in every other way, and you chose the guy? Why Hans? Why not me? Give me a reason. Say something! Green, I'm actually really curious about why you're so convinced you and Hans are identical except for your sex. The handsome guy stood up and walked toward Greet, and he slowly gripped Greet's shoulders. His fingertips sank deeper and deeper into Greet's flesh, causing her face to contort with pain. Oh no, now he's gonna eat Greet to complete the package! But that doesn't matter anymore. The only thing that matters is that you and Hans are twins. So what? So over twins. Nothing much, just that you must be just as tasty as him! I knew it! Yeah, he he adjusted to the whole cannibalism part real quick, didn't he? Or he maybe he was already a cannibal before uh, 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 meeting Hans and Greet. Huh? After that, Greet and Hans went missing. What? But they weren't dead. They both bloomed with wild abandon before withering in vain, frozen in their most beautiful moments. All it took was a little push for a normal person like Greet to murder someone and feed the flesh to someone else. And at that table, she was a cannibal boy too. Greet proved that, uh, proved that and she'll live on forever in my heart. Jade. You, me, the handsome guy right here. We're all the same. Humans are all birds of a feather. Oh shit, James, run! I'm assuming you're not some kind of psycho too. Consistent beliefs, a tragic past, none of that is necessary. Anyone can turn into an evil spirit. Part 3. Anyone can turn into an evil spirit. Oh shoot, James, are you gonna turn evil too? You're like the only one who hasn't turned evil yet. Anyway, I'm sorry, I spent way too much time on the one urban legend. Hope you enjoy it. Hans was slaughtered by his doppelganger. Greet died the same way as her doppelganger. They, they're both worthy of being called doppelgangers, don't you think? Heh <laughs> heh. Bullshit, that's not what a doppelganger is. Jade only brought that up that topic as a way to give away what happened. 
What does she want? Does she want to blackmail me or see my reaction? Or she just want to prove her pet theory that everyone's insane? And how does she know everything about Green and Hans? By stalking them? Spying? Or maybe she hacked into their devices? I gotta look at- uh, I gotta rewatch some of the footage. Gotta figure out when exactly they switch places. Gee, why you tell this, us this urban legend? Oh, come on. You of all people should know, Brucey. Hey, what's the going- the hell's going on here? Were you two plotting to scare me or something? James, you are looking mighty tasty right now. Is that why we're guarding Jade's room? Heh. <laughs> I think I understand why Jade's eyes were sincere. They're the eyes of a writer, evaluating her work. Even Jade herself is a gesture made to dance in her script. So now James and I have told our urban legend. Shouldn't you tell one too? If you heard of the story of the cannibal boy you don't want him to come knocking, you have to tell the story of his past to someone who doesn't know yet, right? What the hell, man? Why are you t asking me this now? <laughs> oh, shit, he laughed in r for real. There was a voice clip. What's so funny, Brucey? Ridiculous, there's no past we're talking about. You civilized people eat plenty of animals, yet you point at people who eat cats and dogs and call them savages. It makes me sick. If you can't eat some, don't eat any. If you want to eat some, then eat them all. Is it that hard? Is it really that hard to be consistent? That's all there is to it, plain and simple. Stop that, Brucey. You've got to leave him some hope. Just look at James' face. Can you see it's full of despair? How's that, that climax going to happen now? Shh. Do you realize what a nuisance it is when too many people find out what I like to eat? I always set an annual limit for myself, but I guess I'm going to go over this year. I guess I should reward Jade's enthusiasm with an urban legend of my own, but I really don't like to conjure things up, so I'll let James here experience it firsthand. Achievement of luck, anyone can turn an evil spirit. Shit. On top of being a cannibal, he also has superpowers. Yeah, these two are unstoppable. And yet, we're probably going to need them because of that zombie apocalypse that occurred in Ending 2 of Loser Reborn. Yeah. They'll save you from the zombies, but who's going to save you from the cannibal and the evil sidekick? And the ending. Kate or not. Huh. Really thought that there was gonna be like one more cutscene, but I guess that was it. Rest in peace, James. Yeah. Unless James also had this dark secret. I'm surprised James did not have any dark secret like the other characters did. Then again, maybe the way he told the story implies that he he did know some cannibal boy. I don't, or maybe he read some similar story, I don't know. But we won't know for sure because he's in... Now he's in Brucey's stomach. Honestly, now it makes kind of, kind of makes sense in retrospect why he spares Lucy in the true ending of Physical Exorcism. In a way, he and Jade are not that different in nature, are they? In fact, they might actually be worse. They probably have an even higher body count. <laughs> Brucey actually has met his quota for cannibalism within a year. Yeah. Sadly, we're gonna have to depend on these t these types of people for the upcoming zombie apocalypse in Loser Reborn Ending 2. I'm pretty sure that's what the fourth game is going to be about, a zombie apocalypse. But what kind of genre will it be? Will it be a neurovisual novel? Or is it going to be some kind of shooter game? Will we get to play as Marty Stu in his... in his real-life form? Anyways, if you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and maybe try out other games in the series.